good people of the internet, and welcome back to Destination Venus here, under the stairs at Harrogate's Amazing Everyman Cinema. It is Wednesday, the 22nd of February, which means it is New Comic Book Day, and time to show you what is on the rack, unless you're listening to the audio version, in which case, listen carefully, and we'll try and describe things. Okay, it's a huge rack this week, which means this is part one of nine. So, buckle up, we've got a lot to gut through. And we're going to start with 20th Century Men. This is the final part of 20th Century Men. Uh, this has been an amazing sort of alternative history of the Cold War with over-the-top Soviets, ridiculously overpowered heroes and villains, and in the middle of it all, just the people of a country trying to survive. It's been a very, very violent ride, but it's been also incredibly thought-provoking. And I've enjoyed every single page. Uh, the trade for this is soliciting now, so if you missed this in singles, please do yourself a favour. Pre-order the trade, because you do not want to miss this story. It is that good. Then we have the Savage Avengers uh, hitting issue 10, and we have the second part of Barbaric Hell to Pay, the second arc, second proper arc, of the Barbaric series. Uh, Owen, the Barbarian, is in Hell. Um, Surin, his sort of partner, is also kind of in hell. Neither of them are enjoying it. This is great. It's fun, it's fast, it's funny, and it features a talking axe that craves blood. What more could you possibly ask for? Well, you could perhaps ask for Clayface. This is part of the Batman One Bad Day sequence, and Clayface, I think, has always been a very underrated character. Uh, Basil Carlo, the idea of this perfect actor, who, because he can transform himself using his play powers, can literally become anybody he wants to be, is an amazing character, because of course, the one thing he cannot really be is himself. There's a real tragedy to Basil Carlin, and it's his rage at not being able to be what he wants to be that, that fuels his, his criminality. And that's fascinating, it really is fascinating. Uh, Black Adam. Another, until recently at least, fairly underrated character. It's issue 8 of 12. And then we have our first number 1 of this week's rack. We have Blue Book. This tells the story of Betty and Barney Hill uh, in glorious, glorious, not exactly monochrome, art. Uh, the colour blue is obviously used quite a lot. Um, this is based on... It's contentious to say this is based on a true story. Um, this is based on the story that Betty and Barney Hill, the first recorded alien abductees, tell. And it's sympathetic to them. It doesn't treat them like a pair of kooks. It actually takes them seriously as the very serious people that they were. Lots of people like to dismiss the Hills as kooks who claim to have been abducted by aliens. But they were very serious people. They were involved in the civil rights movement in the 60s and all kinds of things. So. It's an enthralling tale, uh, written by James Tinian um, of uh, Batman and something he's killing the children fame, uh, illustrated by the brilliant um, Mike Omen, who is best known for his work with Brian Michael Bendis on books like Powers and uh, Murder Inc. So that's highly recommended. It also has a backup strip, uh, which I think is going to tell just stories of the general weir. Uh, this particular issue, we have weird stuff from Coney Island, uh, which is many and varied. And then, finally, for this part, last comic on the top of the rack, Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, issue one. Uh, now, I'm a big fan of Captain Britain. I am a very big fan of Betsy's brother, Brian, who, until very recently, was Captain Britain. I'm not sure about the way they're taking Captain Britain now, but I'm on board to give it a, chance, a try. I've really enjoyed the first issue. Uh, there's lots of weirdness, as you would expect from Captain Britain. Lots of interdimensional, interdimensionality, which is a hard word to say. Uh, the art is pretty cool. It's nice and dynamic. And overall, I'm happy with it, which I'm sure comes as a huge relief to Marvel Comics, who, I have no doubt, were simply waiting for my approval. And now they have it, so there we go. OK, that is the end of part one. We will be back shortly with the imaginatively titled Part 2. Until then, be kind to yourself, be kind to everybody else. Stay safe, and above all else, stay geeky. We'll see you in a bit.